equal temper spacing or equal temperament. It makes each semitone equally spaced throughout an octave. Okay, it's what it does. Now, we've been talking a lot in private messages on Facebook. A lot of people asking me about short scale lengths and long scale lengths. What's the difference? What's the advantage or disadvantage of each? And how do they know to lay the frets out in the right place for whatever scale length they, they are? We know Martin has a standard uh, scale length and they also have a short scale length and a long scale length and all three of those are totally different from Gibson scale lengths and Fender and some other companies but how do they all do this? It's the things that keep coming up and what's the disadvantages and advantages or whatever to them? Well, long, long, very long ago they came up with this thing called the rule of 18, okay? They would decide what they wanted their scale length to be, whether it be short, medium, long, whatever. Okay, decide what your scale length is, measure it. Divide 18 into that number. And that will give you a number, a measurement, from your nut to the first fret. Okay, and take what's left over, divide 18 into that again, that will give you another number. That's the distance from uh, the first fret to the second fret. Take what's left over, divide 18 into it it'll give you uh, the numbers where your third fret will go and you know one down the line to however many frets when you get down to the twelfth fret of course you're halfway there uh, you could put more frets on but it would be so close together and probably impossible to reach on especially on acoustic guitars but uh, that's how they came up with that and then it was I don't know when they changed that rule of 18 well, they honed in on it, you know, as years went by and technology got better and, and guys and gals got smarter. They changed that number uh, to a more accurate number, 17.817, I think, is the number that you would divide into the scale length, whatever distance your scale that you decided, 17.817, I think, or maybe it's 71. Anyways, that's the number they would divide into the scale length to get, you know, where their frets would go. Okay, the difference in, uh, or the advantages or disadvantages, I don't know if there's that many differences or not. I mean, you know, you're going to get a different, probably with a longer scale length, the strings are going to vibrate a little bit longer. They vibrate in an elliptic pattern, so, you know, it's longer. You would think it would ring out maybe a little bit, be a little more ballsy. I don't really know if that's the case. You can decide. But uh, bending. Let me give you an example here, okay? Say this is tuned in standard tuning, and it should be, all right? I'm not sure what the scale length on this guitar is, but let's say we put a capo on the second fret, okay? Now... We're one step higher than we was without the capo. So, leave the capo on the second fret and tune the guitar back down to where it's in this G again with the capo on it. Alright? Now, let's just say the capo's the nut now. And, uh, you know, you got a capo on, you hit a G chord, and it is a G even with the capo on. We just shortened the scale length. One thing that that does is make the strings very, very loose. I mean, if you're into bends and stuff like that, short scale length uh, will you'd make it way easier to bend the strings. It's shorter and you're having to tune it down because it's shorter to, to get the same pitch that. I hope that makes sense. If you think about it, it should. But, you know, it changes your sound it's got to affect your sound and how it rings out and the scale was never perfect I mean you know you can calculate and calculate and calculate and the number that they came up with that is 17.817 is as close as they could get to make every fret every string no doubt perfect all the way up the neck and you know it's not perfect though it's uh, the laws of physics there's no way to get it perfect you can get it very close, but you can't get it perfect. Short scale may be a little easier to play, you know, especially when it comes to bending and stuff. But in acoustic guitars, I think you sacrifice a little bit of sound 
with a shorter scale. Uh, you know, that's just my, I don't know if that's true or not, it's just my thoughts. Uh, on an acoustic guitar, you know, the shorter this, this scale length is, it's going to sound different. You'll see. And you can decide for yourself. But th that's all that is, is that's the way they do it. That's how they come up with these numbers. A lot of companies use what they call 12 through to 2. And that's uh, taking that, uh, I believe, if I remember right, it's taking that 17.817 and, you know, doing it that way. But that's how they calculate where the frets go. And, you know, it's, it's, it's all got to do with the scale length. The longer your scale length is, the farther apart your frets are going to be. The closer, shorter your scale length is, the closer your frets will be. And like I say, bends will be easier because the strings will be looser. Makes it's common sense, you know. You're tuning that string to the same pitch, but it's a shorter scale length, so they're going to be looser. They're going to be easier to bend and easier to chord, but they're not going to sound quite like, you know, a longer scale length. There's going to be a difference there, which you'll see. But anyways, that's my explanation on scale length. It's a dirty quick one. It, man, you can get into all kinds of numbers and fractions and figures and the, the many different ways that they went about doing it. Scale lengths can be really uh, mind-boggling. I hope that helps some of you guys out. Shed some light. of questions on Facebook and if you guys ever want to ask me anything do it on Facebook don't do it here on YouTube because I like I say I don't get notified when I get a private message YouTube does not notify me or tell me and I, occasionally I look in there and I see it but uh, if you want to get a hold of me do it on Facebook and uh, that's what I've been getting a lot of questions and stuff so I'm going to do a video of requests someone wanted to know how to steam out a dent in a guitar I'll show you how I do it. Uh, what else? I can't remember what the questions were right now, but there were some good questions. And I thought, man, I could take all this stuff, put it together, and make a video of all, the, all of it, you know. Just go through it quickly and explain, show you how I do it. So uh, stay tuned for that. It's uh, so going to be some kind of re request video. I'm not sure yet, but watch for it. It's coming to a channel near you. Thanks to the new subscribers. Man, you guys, I, I, I'm digging it and rocking. Comment, baby. Say hello, something, anything. And I will see you on a another fix real soon. Or music video, something. I'm not sure what yet, but uh, probably maybe the request video. We'll see. Cheers to you.
gitu. 